uh, main gripe with the BO3 is whoever grabs the control point first tends to win it. But uh, right. mathematically, I mean, I haven't done any research myself just to really back that up. But uh, if someone ever did do the research, I'm sure that would be right in line with that. Um, all right, so we've got the Sailor Scouts are your blue team up in the top left. We've got the Unicorn Gods up in the top right. Worth pointing out, the Sailor Scouts are actually an entirely female squad here, uh, which is rather rare. So um, I'll make sure to use the correct pronouns when casting them. Surly Sheep here on the Pharah with Quake tagging along as Mercy. It looks like we don't have a Pharah Mercy on the other side. Sweet Dreams is going to be playing Mercy, but they've got no Pharah, just a Genji in tow. Looks like we do already have that first kill on the board, and that's gonna be a big one too, because it's the Mercy going down as Sailor Scouts pick up that first kill, and they're just looking to try to secure this point here. Annie on fire, pick up a second one, that's gonna be the death wish, and it seems as though Sailor Scouts is going to be able to pick this one up, and they're gonna take the first cap. I was wondering if Winston was gonna take a dive off the side. Lucio chose to do that, but Winston, of course, was able to leap away and still survive, so uh, Condemner, they're gonna wait for that Lucio to respawn, but yeah, Surly Sheep nailing some rockets already through the uh, through the opening there with that Mercy boost. Still looking for some targets now, but they've got pretty dominant control of the point to start us off. Now they're looking to make a re-engagement here, but they're taking a lot of pressure. Look at that King already down to half HP, forcing a lot of his cooldowns out before he can even really go in. Now they have to basically just wait out those cooldowns and they're going to lose a lot of score percentage in the meantime. Yep, ticking up and up. There's a D.Va explosion coming out. Does manage to catch both supports there on the side of Unicorn Gods. Excellent play from Annie on fire to keep control. That's going to give them another 15, 20% easily. Uh, and if they keep them at bay like this, I'm, I'm expecting 100-0 at this rate. It's just both, both of these first fights here. I mean, they've just gone very much the way of Sailor Scouts, where Sweet Dream 98 has been killed off first in both of those fights. You've got to make sure that your Mercy is involved in these fights or else you're really going to be very much behind. And it seems like they're going to go ahead and get another one going. The Resurrect going to be down again, though, for that person. I'm watching Gates right now on the Roadhog as he does have Whole Hog available. Hasn't chosen to pop it just yet. Just trying to keep himself alive. Missing another hook on the Mercy. Pops the ult right before going down, unfortunately. Uh, Quake and the rest are going to benefit from that sound barrier from Mixie. And, yeah, 75%. Almost the entire enemy team killed off there. Surly Sheep and Annie on Fire lighting up that kill feed, and it looks like Unicorn Gods are in dire straits here. They do have a sound barrier to work with and the Valkyrie from Sweet Dream to try and make something happen here. The big thing here is that the sound barrier is gone from Mixie. That's all they've had to use so far, so definitely looking good for them, but they have to get on the point here because they're going to have to fake Oh, it two over HP! They've got sound coming out. Like they're gonna get on the point. Lucio, I thought he was going to die before getting it off, but he managed to hit the sound barrier with only 2 HP. Deathwish does go down first, though, so it's still a 6v5. Annie on fire again with the double on both supports. Excellent stuff there. Diva definitely an MVP on that first round. Wow. Sailor Scouts with a dominating performance there, and especially coming out of Annie on fire. Two fights out of the, what, four that they had for the 100-0. Annie on fire taking both of the supports out very early on, giving their team just such a hefty advantage. Annie definitely doing a good job, and uh, you, can, you can see how maybe that might be the case of just the, the gold border fact. You know, <laughs> having that experience, being at that Grandmaster level, knowing when to utilize that ultimate and where to place it to so just get the most effect out of it, and man, she really has. Uh, I didn't check Annie on Fire's profile. Is she actually GM? Yep. Sweet. That's excellent. My uh, my peak's 38.44, and I've slid all the way back down to 3K. I don't know if I'll ever get back up. Uh, that's, it, was, it took a lot of games to do that. Uh, but we have, again, Annie on Fire leading the charge here with IDDQT, trying to take over the well now. We've got Unicorn Gods trying to mix up their composition a little bit. King is off the Winston onto the Reinhardt, so perhaps that barrier will end up helping them out. Deathwish has also swapped over to the Pharah, so they've got a Soldier and Pharah on both sides for their main DPS. And no kills just yet, so still a little bit more cautious, perhaps, here from Unicorn Gods on this one. So a lot of pressure going over to that bear in the sky. Annie on fire with another pick. They have a ton of barrier pressure on the side of Sailor Scouts right now. That's really kind of hurting this Reinhardt, and they're going to be able to find that mercy yet again. Annie on fire with another one. Look at that. Annie on fire just lighting them up. Four deaths on the sides of Unicorn Gods. They're going to have to reset. Deathwish actually uh, is actually already back near the spawn, so he can just hang around there for his team. Uh, looks like Annie on fire up to 78% toward that Diva explosion already. If you compare the Pharah's ult percentages, you see Surly Sheep 75% compared to Deathwish's 23. That's uh, slow going here for Unicorn Gods, but they're all bundled up now, trying to break their way in here. Gates dropping the 
biofield there, trying to get everyone back up to full health. There's a bit of a fair duel unfolding here, but it's a fair mercy versus just a fair. That's always a tough proposition. King opens the door a little bit here with a kill onto Mixie. Uh, King does go down in the process. Diva explosion goes out and catches one. De uh, Death wish on Farah goes down. Oh, you can see the pressure coming on here. I mean, look at this. The way that they decisively win these team fights. And really all it takes is one, maybe two ults just to secure every single one of these. And remember, throughout this entire thing, you can just see the pressure that's coming out onto that Reinhardt shield, shield where King is just struggling to get things done because of the pressure that's on his barrier. Any on fire, Tachi, you got IDQT as well, certainly Sheep putting some pressure down. I mean, a lot of these guys are just thrusting everything that they have to break that barrier down and give their team a huge advantage going into the beginning of every single fight. All right, I got a little bit of feedback that I do need to turn you up just a bit. I can tell that as well. I think uh, game audio as louder than I expected it to be, but we'll adjust that right after this round. Uh, right now, Arisa does have an ultimate available. The Bongo could go down here to help out everybody. Uh, Quake and Mixie do have their support ultimates as well, so if they just stand firm on the point, okay, they've got a chance. A, what a stun going on today on fire. He's actually going to follow it up. He gets a huge knockdown, taking the D.Va out of play, but it's just not going to be enough. Sailor Scouts. Surly Sheep. These girls are monsters. Surly Sheep just took full advantage of that while they tried to take advantage of the Earth Shatter. Surly Sheep was not caught in it, so it was just uh, you know pouring out rockets into that enemy field there. King taking a lot of shield damage already, but he's got no chance to even get to the point in time. So that is a swift victory. 100-0, 100-0. Scalar, uh, excuse me, Sailor Scouts taking it 2-0 on Ilios to start off these group stages. Insane performance. Uh, I mean, honestly, not a performance I think anybody really would have expected. I mean, not putting anything away from, uh, from these girls, rather. But, uh, you know, just to see such a dominating performance at all in round one is, is so huge. I mean, two 100 to zeros. That's just not something that I think anybody could have saw coming. I definitely did not, but I mean, I didn't really do a whole lot of research on these teams. I'm happy to be surprised, you know. Uh, but uh, that is the first game in the books already. So, uh, again, welcome everybody if you're just joining us here to 